What's up guys, it is Murder Inc. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video and we finally have the new content we've been waiting for for probably 7 to 8 months now. So really exciting news and I'm going to give you not like a guide for dummies or like a beginner's guide but kind of a more advanced guide on my opinion on this. As soon as this went live I streamed for 10 and a half hours. And it was quite painful, however it was fun and people seemed to thoroughly enjoy that long stream. I definitely had fun and it was good to finally have something new to do after all of this time of not really having much to do. A lot of it was because I was trying to break a lot of these speed run records here as far as clearing things as fast as possible, which definitely was fun. However, here we're going to go over some things you should keep in mind and kind of tips and tricks along the way. There's a lot of questions about secret rooms, a lot of questions about the bosses. I am going to be releasing a video on the two MVP champions. As you probably saw with the spoiler, one of them is going to be Baron. And then the second champion I'm going to go over as well. As far as progression goes in these stages. Now if you are doing hard, if you are doing normal, this is going to apply to both of you. So keep those in mind as I'm going forward here with this kind of mini guide on the Doom Tower. Now the first thing I want to clarify is there are no best comps, best teams for the bosses or for the waves. That doesn't exist, we're literally on day two, so all of the information is way too new for me to be able to logically say, hey these champions work the best as far as progression goes, aim for this, aim for that, it's just way too new. We haven't had enough time on this and it's always going to be changing. So for me to give you a list of five champions to always defeat this dragon, to always defeat this spider as the difficulty starts to ramp up, is just not going to be smart. And if you invest in these champions, you're going to be very disappointed when one new champion comes up once things get harder and completely change the entire team you're using and now you can no longer use it. So that's where I stand on that and why I'm not going to give you specific champions that are going to work out. So as far as the early on stages, the early days of progression goes, my advice, point number one, literally just brute force your way through the entire thing. Use your insane damage dealers. You do have to put some thought into it. You need a defense down and a weaken or a weaken. Going for that AoE using some type of reset champion, it's not going to be like dungeons where you just throw in a team and you want their cooldowns to be up for the end boss and dungeons. On the waves there's a little bit more thought to it where you want to make sure you're debuffing each wave, nuking each wave and making sure the cooldowns are cycling or you're using a champion to auto reduce the cooldowns for you based on their skills so you can keep progressing through. So that's going to be the first tip. Don't just throw your champions in there. Start banging the desk saying, why is this not working? It's simple, just take a second to think about it. Have a reviver, have someone who applies debuffs and someone who can potentially nuke the entire wave by themselves. It's really easy to do that in these early stages. The gear obviously is going to be more intense while focusing on hard than it's going to be for normal. Normal is extremely easy right now and hard is definitely going to be difficult. Now I want to talk about the difficulties for one second. Now, some people are a bit too optimistic on how they think hard is going to go down. But what I can tell you is less than, significantly less than 1%, probably 0.5% or lower of the entire player base in this entire game with the current state of the scaling of these stages are going to make and complete the hard Doom Tower all the way through. Now why am I saying things like that? We're looking at champions that are going to be level 308. We're going to have the second wave here and I know I'm reading and you can't see it. Rhodos, Mountain King, Sea for the Lost Bride, a second Mountain King, and a second Rhodos. Now the fact that the Sifi is going to be 264 is going to make it so you have to build your team with that speed minimum with the turn meter booster to make sure you're even getting a chance to go. This is going to add 275 resistance, 300 accuracy, and like I said already, 150 speed to all of the base ascended stats of these champions on top of being level 303. So with all that information being said, this is going to be extremely difficult for most of the player base to complete. However, as time goes on, more and more people are going to figure out the best teams to do this and the percentage of people who are going to be able to complete this are going to complete it. Do they need to nerf it? My answer, absolutely not. 
If they nerf it, a lot of people are going to complete it and we're going to run into the same problem we saw with Faction Wars. It came out, it was cleared, it was nerfed multiple times and now and it became boring extremely fast. The same exact thing is going to happen with the Doom Tower where I can tell you for one thing, I am not going to want to do 120 stages of this once this becomes a walk in the park over and over again because like you can see from the best team I did here, 11 seconds and this is definitely up for contention. This is the fastest you can do it with the animations that are possible in this game. Now maybe there's a way to figure out how to do this with two champions using refresh gear relentless gear it's possible you can get 10 maybe 9 seconds out of this however as of right now this is the fastest you can do it based on animations once this is done for as many levels as possible there's going to be zero reason to continue getting this global ranking here and after one two three or four resets or months of doing the doom tower it's going to be old content and that's definitely not something plarium wants it's not something the player wants so i think if they are going to tune this, they have to be very careful with how they tune this. This hard tower should not be easy at all. It's supposed to be hard. And anytime you make content that can be cleared too quickly by even your most advanced player base, it's not going to be a good thing. So now that we went over that, this opens up a lot of things for lots of progression for players who are only going to be clearing normal. And they're slowly going to start chipping away at the hard tower this is very good because as they get more gear they're going to have access to new stages new rewards and i think that's a really good thing this definitely has high emphasis on rewarding players who are going for progression over the long-term period of time with this doom tower so in my opinion keep it as is if they feel like once we hit these dungeons once we do enough testing how many people actually clear this if they want to nerf it a little bit i think that's fine but making this accessible to the entire player base who consider themselves end game e word consider themselves end game i think it's going to be very bad for the game make people grind the gear make people have to use their brain a little bit come up with the best team comps that they have with their roster to keep progressing forward. This is going to be the tricky part to talk about, the secret rooms. People are saying, don't do the secret rooms, wait until you keep progressing in the dungeons so you can go back, do the secret rooms, get all the extra keys, and farm certain stages of the gear sets. I wanna talk about the gear sets because I think it's not properly being talked about. Let's go over this first set here, Affinity Breaker. 30% crit damage on a four piece set having a 20% chance to change a weak hit into a critical hit. Now let's think about this for a second. Using four pieces of gear for a guaranteed 30% crit damage, that's it. Now, if you are in the situation where you are strong affinity, fighting something that is negative affinity to you, which means you have a 35% chance to weak hit. If you do end up weak hitting, you have a one in 5% chance of changing that weak hit back to a critical hit. Now let's think about what other gear sets we have in this game. Savage, Cruel, Attack, Crit Rate. Some of those are two sets, some of those are four sets, and those are much, much better than Affinity Breaker. Even Swift Parry gear is much better than Affinity Breaker. Having a 1 in 5% chance to revert a weak hit on something that's already only a 35% chance, even though it may seem like it's proccing more often than not for you as the champion, it's really hard to justify making that something that's meta over something else. Now, if you want to use this in the very niche situation of the Doom Tower and going forward, it's very possible you can find a wave where Affinity Breaker is going to be that gear set to get you to that next level. That's possible. Putting too much emphasis on saving your keys for all of these gear sets is really hard to do. And let's move on to the next set because the next set is one of the most talked about. The Untouchable Gear Set. People are calling this amazing S tier. Unfortunately, in my opinion, this is not even a very good set. This is an immunity set and that's all it is. It's just an immunity set. Now, I've heard the argument of you're giving yourself resistance to make sure that if you do have an immunity set and you're running against someone that strips buffs from your team, you get more resistance now. However, that is a very, very bad point 
because 40 resistance on four pieces of gear is not going to be the difference between you getting stripped or not stripped. The whole point in running immunity gear from Fire Knight is so you don't have to worry about resistance at all. Now, if you want to make the point for the 0.51% of players who are in Platinum, this helps you resistance tune your team against Valkyrie teams. That's a very good point, and this set is worth saving up for. However, to 99% of the player base, this set is literally just a glorified immunity set. You do get the extra stats and player power from this resistance, but it's really not going to help you out in the long run. Unless you're running some type of four minute team in the arena, then I can see you have a point for wanting that extra resistance. But overall, there's nothing special here. Now let's go into the fatal gear. In my opinion, this is probably the best set and this is why. 15% attack, 5% accuracy, really straightforward. It's better than the normal attack set. It gives you that additional 5% crit rate you use three of these sets you get an extra 15% crit rate and 15% definitely goes a long way when you are gearing your champion so if you wanted to save for a set probably save for this one the big question is going to be is 15% crit rate better than 15% ignore defense from cruel that answer is no however this set isn't going to be as easy to farm and cruel gear as we know isn't as easy to farm there's lots of rng on both gear sets to get this so Overall, something to consider. In my opinion, this is probably the best gear set, but I don't think it's anything too crazy since we do have Cruel already in the game. Now, so you guys can see this, I'm going to shift this over just a little bit so you can actually read this because I just realized I was blocking it and we didn't want to resize it like that. Let's reopen this here and this should be good. Okay, so what we're going to talk about is Frostbite set. This surprisingly enough isn't that bad so frostbite set is a two-piece 15 percent chance to block freeze debuffs 10 percent chance to place freeze debuff on the attacker now that is a very low percent chance however this is an additive bonus if you are using three sets so that goes from 15 to 45 percent which is not bad odds and that goes from 10% chance to 30%, which is a little bit low, but it's still not bad. You can get the proper gear if you want to make a champion that's strictly made for countering someone like a Tormund, setting that freeze back off on them, or even making a team like that. I think you can get some use out of it. There are also going to be champions and bosses that freeze you in the Doom Tower, so this is also a set that can possibly help you with progression on those bosses once they start showing up in the higher difficulty especially if they are in the last stage of the Doom Tower cycle. That boss is going to be very hard, so if you want to start farming this gear or situations like that, I can see the point there. The fact that they made this actually stack and made it additive is very good, and that's a good step forward. However, overall, now that I've gone over this, let's widen the screen here. I do want to say that none of these sets, in my opinion, are worth saving for unless you really want to. Now there is no downside to saving your secret keys, however it's not a big deal if you decide not to save your keys. I know there's been a lot of people saying, oh my god, don't use those keys, it's a missed opportunity, you could get insane gear later on, and that goes to my point. We just went over all four of the sets, I gave you my opinion on it, and it is my opinion, but like I said, I feel like there are fairly strong points to be understood there as far as how good these sets actually are. Um, this gets to one of the final points of this video. Where do I start? Hard or normal? Now, there are enough days in this cycle. If you do complete the Doom Tower and use your keys every single day, you can complete the normal and the hard difficulty. So if I had to give you the best advice on where to start in this game, I would say try to get to stage 10 of normal. See if this boss, in my opinion the bosses are extremely undertuned and underwhelming. That's a separate topic that I'm going to go over next, but try to get to this boss here. And that way you can use your silver keys, you can use all of them on here, or you can use one on the secret room. Get that key back and use it back on the boss. It's up to you just to get a feel for it, but... Basically, you want to be able to gauge your account based on the difficulty you see in front of you. So if you don't know this, the difference between normal and hard is very, very large. So the hardest stage in normal isn't as hard as the first stage, hard difficulty. Now the champion combinations definitely have potential to make it harder. However, as far as the level of the champions and the stats they're going to have, 
they're higher in stage one hard than they are going to be at stage 119 on normal. These are all things to keep in mind. Now, you definitely don't want to neglect hard until after you completely clear easy, because then you're going to be wasting keys instead of being able to farm bosses. So I would recommend every 10 stages, every 20 stages, go back to hard difficulty, see where you left off or begin there to start with, see what it's like, get a feel for all of the stages here and what you actually need to work on to, because then you're going to be ready for stage 119 down the line in the normal difficulty. So that would be my best advice for you. Now let's talk about these bosses here. And this goes to what I was saying before. There's not going to be a meta team. Um, the difficulties are extremely low on the lower difficulties and it's going to constantly be changing. So to say this one team is the best, you need these champions. You really don't need anybody. This is literally going to be a brute force show until probably the fifth sixth or seventh boss we see when it starts getting difficult and we have to care about the mechanics i get and i do understand people can say not everyone has your gear this is me comparing hard difficulty to you comparing wherever you're at in the game if you're capable of doing hard difficulty in the stages and hard you will understand that these bosses are extremely easy and can be brute force very easily if you have the gear to successfully clear the stages of hard if you're in normal, the same thing applies. If you breeze through the first nine stages of normal difficulty, the stage 10 boss was an absolute joke for you. It's the same for hard if you met the same conditions there. But as we can see here, I have three champions with barely any gear here. And like I said, I don't really care about the extra gear. We can just throw this on auto and you can watch this for yourself and we'll see how we do. I think this definitely needs to be tuned up. The beginning stages, while they're not supposed to be hard, it's just way too easy in my opinion. So we have our S tier Gallic over here. Let me slide this over so we get a full view. There are a lot of mechanics here, but like I said, this is such an underwhelming fight that there's really not much to this. There's a hex debuff out. I'm gonna get more into this once we start getting further down the line onto the more difficult stages. Where I can actually theory craft and actually struggle and have to respect all of these mechanics here. Because at the moment, everything can just be wiped through and no one really knows what the best teams are going to be because so many players are having such an easy time with these bosses. As you can see here, three champions in, I'm pretty sure resistance gear just for total power, was able to do this with a bad L with the Draco Morph. I know tons of my clan mates have done this with one champion, whether it being a Mashald, a bad L by itself. So that's kind of where I'm getting at with how easy this is. Even if they are among some of the top players in the game, the fact that it can be done with one champion is very underwhelming. And the same thing is going to be applied to this boss here. Now this boss, you do have to understand a few things about this. I think it's the Nether Spider, that's what it's called. And this is just another boss where the fact that you can in fact one shot it and I really did not want to use the defense down there, which is going to be a problem. Once I get to the boss, let's just go ahead and leave this and try this out again okay so as i was saying another very underwhelming boss the fact that this is the second boss in the series is a little bit disappointing but i can see where this can be extremely fun and extremely difficult once we do move on to those later rounds and things start getting i guess we can call it spicy to say the least okay so here's the initial setup here the only thing that you care about is the turn meter of this boss on turn one this is the only thing you care about with the current state of the health of this champion the only thing that's relevant to you is killing this boss before he gets a turn so right here he got a turn he's gonna summon his spiderlings here and what you want to do now is you want to be able to kill this boss with this next hit or the following hit after that if you don't, he's going to heal up with the counterattacks there. Obviously, he's dead now. This is just an animation overflow. So that's what you can do. And the fact that this is possible, and keep in mind, these are spider tune champions with extremely low speeds. They have way too much damage gear. And as we can see, one of the Royal Guards didn't even get a turn to go. So this is being done with four champions. Once this gets harder, I'm really looking forward to this boss and being able to make a guide to guide all of the players on who the easiest champions are to make this. 
And that's why it's so hard, even when you look at Spider Stage 20 Dungeon, why it's really hard to make a guide. Because the fact that players can do in 8 seconds, 9 seconds, 10 seconds, it's hard to step back from your gear and say, what if I use this champion? What if I use that champion? It's just a way of people thinking, and once you know there's an easy way to do it, it really clouds your judgment on the efficient ways you can make a team that are not free to play friendly, but more friendly to the entire player base. So once it starts getting challenging, I'm going to do my best to work with my clan, other top players to figure out the best champion combinations for these bosses once they start getting difficult, which hopefully, like I said, is within the next, I don't know, week or so, and we can finally start seeing some of the difficulty skyrocket so I can give you guys useful information that will last for months and months to come, not give you the best team for floor 20 nether spider, and it's going to be irrelevant the next difficulty nether spider that actually comes out. So as far as that goes, that is pretty much the basis of this guide. I guess we can talk about the rewards. Honestly, this is free. We get free keys every single day. I wasn't expecting a ton of rewards. You shouldn't have either. If you were expecting insane rewards from this, you're new to Raid Shadow Legends. The fact that this is free, we get this every single rotation. All you have to do is complete the stages. There's really nothing to complain about. You could say, I want more shards. I want more this. All quality of life stuff and totally irrelevant to anything outside of a useless rant. All right, guys, that is my video today. Let me know what you guys think about the new content. That is the Doom Tower. Give me your thoughts. Give me your feedback. Are you enjoying it? That's what's most important here. If you're not enjoying this content, I want to know why. What champions are you using? leave a comment below i'm going to go through them i'm curious to see i did a lot of interaction on the twitch wanting to figure out where people were starting normal or hard let me know also in the comments where you decided to start for your first few days hard difficulty or normal and as always guys smash the like button if you enjoy this content subscribe turn on the notification bell and i will see you all in the next video